All right, guys. So we got one here. We got one from the channel. And he's been a part of the channel for a while, making comments, that kind of stuff. And he's actually, he supports me through Patreon as well. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, really appreciate it. So we're out here in this beautiful Finca. I've already done the tour. And that's probably going to be a different, um, different video. So check out that video to check out this whole Finca. And on that video, I made a, I asked you guys, make a comment how much you think he's paying per month. So whoever made the comments, we'll see who's right. We'll see who's correct, how much the Finca costs per month. But anyways, I want to talk to Juan. I've been here for a bit. I, we got here around, I'm not sure, like around 10 o'clock or so, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So but been here about three hours already. But I've been resisting from asking him a bunch of questions off camera. So I want to get these uh, questions on camera for you guys as well. Because I know for a fact that there's probably a bunch of people just like Juan who are thinking about coming to Colombia. And maybe his story can, uh, can relate to you guys, right? You guys can uh, relate. So let's see. So Juan, tell me, tell me first of all, is this your first time in Colombia? My first time, yeah. Ever? Ever in my and life. How long have you been here so far? I got here September 24th. So and we're, we're November 15th right now. So how many weeks is that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be two months already. Two months you've been here? It's going to be two months. Yeah, I went by quick. Yeah, I went really fast. Dude, cause I remember I remember when you sent me the message saying, hey, I got to I got to Medellin. I, got, I made it to Colombia. Yeah, yeah. That felt like only two weeks ago. <sighs> it's been like two months already. Yeah. All right, so you got here. You got here to Colombia. And did you come straight to this finca? Um, no. So, um, you know, uh, my girlfriend, she had an apartment, so we stayed there for a while, but we kind of arranged the finca before I even got here, mm -hmm. and we couldn't move in until the 1st of October. Of so, October. Mm -hmm. So we're at an apartment for a little bit. So you've been here in the finca for a month and a half? A month and a half, yeah. Okay, so you're in her apartment in Bejo. Yeah, for a couple weeks. How was Bejo? Because like people... No, Bejo is cool. It's nice. It's, uh, it's not the United States, right? But it's, uh, you know... what? Before I came to Colombia, I was like, man, you know, it's going to be dangerous, this and that and the other. I felt felt safer here, like in Bejo. Uh -huh. I felt safer here in Colombia, you know, as, as much as I do in the United States. Okay. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some places here in Colombia where you don't want to go the same way where you don't want to go in some places in, in the United States, in California and Texas. And what part of California are you from again? Uh, from, I'm from Southern California, but so I was, I'm actually originally from Texas, like you. So I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas, <laughs> and I uh, joined the military, and then uh, I went to California. So I went to California, and I got stationed at Pearl Harbor. Went back to California. Went back to Pearl Harbor. Uh -huh. Went to Guam, and then I retired in California because my uh, my wife at the time is from California. So you know, and I, I had a you know I was working there for a long time after I got out of the military, and then uh, you know I just started watching. I just. I just started watching videos about other places besides the United States because I just got so sick of all the, just how divided our country is. You know, it's, Unfortunately, yeah. you know, it's politics and just, you know, about wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. Just it, everything's, uh, everything has to be either, you know, one, one way or the other. And I just got, I was like, man, there's got to be something else. A lot of division, basically. A lot of division, yeah. yeah okay, okay. And, and you mentioned we mentioned Bejo not being dangerous, but there are parts of Bejo that are dangerous. So be careful, you guys. We're going out there. Even his girlfriend's from Bejo, and she says that she doesn't go into some neighborhoods there. So knowing the person from that area is probably best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you knew your girlfriend when you oh, went. Yeah. She took you to the right places. And then you know, I followed all your advice about you know don't give them papaya. Papaya is like don't give them a reason to to rob you or don't you know don't flaunt don't flaunt stuff. Don't. Don't come here and be the ugly American that everybody talks about. You know, just be cool and blend in, and just don't, you know, don't try to stand out. Don't show off your your Nikes and your all your your gold chains and stuff like. You know that can happen in the United States. You walk around flaunting your stuff, you're gonna, you're gonna get jacked anywhere. But right. At no time have I ever felt unsafe here. Uh -huh. at, at no time. So, what made you choose Colombia, though? I mean, you've never been here. You're watching videos from other places all around the world. What made you zero? Why well, I started watching here videos and then. Never in my, in my life considered Colombia because all all you hear is all the bad stuff that mm -hmm. that the media talks. You know, you know the media is full of cra you know full of crap. So yeah. um, everything they say, you got to take it with a grain of salt. But I started watching your videos. I'm like, that's Colombia. Like you're walking around, and I'm like, what the hell? This is not look like what I thought it would look like. Like I thought I was thinking like third world, and mm -hmm. you know, like some of the like I'm, I'm thinking Tijuana, kind of like that, right? Yeah. Or, or like the movies, you know, Pablo Escobar stuff. And, yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful here. Um, the weather, it's perfect. It's like average 70 degrees. Um, 
and my girlfriend she'll, she'll say it's really hot outside and it's like 75 and i'm like are you kidding me like people would kill for this weather right you know, it's amazing here yeah. right and yeah. you've been in the finca you've been in this finca for a month and a half yeah i i'm not gonna lie guys when he told me to stay in the finca this, this mm -hmm. long I was thinking, my God, Juan's probably bored out of his mind, you know, over here in the Finca. But how, how has it been living in the Finca? It's like, it's like, uh, you know what? It, I, I told uh, one of my friends the other day, being here, it's like, it's like when you know you've been working really hard and you go on your first day vacation and you're so excited and it feels so good and uh -huh. it feels like that every single day uh -huh. and it's never gonna end. You know, the worst day of your vacation is the last day because you know you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna go back to work, but. He, living here is like you're on a vacation every day and it never gets old even though you think it can, it can get old it doesn't like there's some new animal that you see or uh, new fruit that you discover here uh, mm -hmm. new insects like um, I mean we don't even have internet yet and I'm not even bored you know uh, wow. yeah so we don't have internet yet. just just my phone but uh -huh. uh, you know we're gonna get the internet installed here hopefully next week knock on wood but uh, it, it's amazing here. We got the pool here. Uh, we have, you know, uh, friends come over, family come over, and we just, you know, we just uh, laugh and have fun and play music and, and just have a really good time. You know, get a lot of rest. Like I've never, I've never slept so well in my life. Uh, you know, I get this. I just get great sleep here. Uh -huh. The air is just, it's clean. The, it's beautiful. Like I can just sit on, I sit on a hammock for like two hours in the morning every day, and I'll just sit there and listen to music or. You know, read the news, and I just look at the mountains, and it's just I never get tired of it. And, uh -huh. and my girlfriend, you know, she's used to like all this green everywhere. She's used to all the nature and trees, but for me, I, I just absorb it every day, and I, I'm just grateful. Uh huh. <coughs> That's for awesome. Y'all, what y'all hear in the background is the kids. So it's actually uh, his girlfriend's kid and niece, I believe, here playing. So if we hear that, if you hear that background noise, that's just the children. But hey, we're living life here. Juan's <coughs> living life with family. Well, tell me. Like, how was your Spanish when you first came to Colombia? Oh, it was, it was really bad. So, uh, I thought I knew more, you know, I, I thought I knew Spanish and I didn't. And, uh, and then, you know, if you know Mexican Spanish or like California Spanish, Texas Spanish, it's totally different from Colombian Spanish. So some words have different meanings uh -huh. and uh, yeah, it just takes a little while to get used to, but, uh, the best way to do it is just <coughs> immerse yourself. Pardon. Yeah, and, and your girlfriend, she doesn't speak any English. Very little. Very little. Yeah, so very in little. the beginning, how did you guys communicate? Uh, mostly Spanish. All right, guys. Sorry for the break. Uh, ask the question. You're Spanish. So like, when you got here, uh, your girlfriend, uh, Alexandra, she doesn't speak English that much. How did no. you guys communicate? Um, you know, I just, uh, the translator and, uh -huh. and uh, mostly, and then, uh, you know, I understood her more. Your parents, your, she parents, was, your parents speak Spanish. Yeah, they do. Did they speak Spanish you growing up? Uh, I, yeah, but uh, you know, I forgot most of it. You know, when I was in the military. So okay. yeah, that's kind of like me. I'm I'm Hispanic descent as well, uh, Mexican descent. But my parents spoke Spanish, but they didn't teach us Spanish, unfortunately. So we had to learn as adults, unfortunately. It just happens. Right? Mm -hmm. what, what are you like, third or fourth generation Texan? Yeah, like probably fourth generation. Yeah, me yeah. too. Fourth generation. Okay, so you got it through the transit. So now you've been here a month, two months. And the whole time with your girlfriend, mm -hmm. how's your Spanish now, you think? Oh, man, it, <clears throat> it's night and day difference, yeah. Like, the other day I was speaking Spanish with my dad, and he was, like, blown away, yeah. He was proud, too, mm -hmm. I bet. I, man, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, what was the other questions I had? Now, you made a comment to me before, when we were talking in the past, that you've actually lost <clears throat> some weight moving here. Like, how much? Like, yeah, I've lost, like, 20 pounds, yeah. Without yeah. even trying. Yeah, I really didn't change much. Uh, you know, a lot of the foods here are, are different. They don't use uh, high fructose corn syrup. That's where I want to get at because yeah. you have experience. Like oh, you've yeah. worked in the food industry <laughs> in the states. So tell me, like, like you've worked in the, a company called Cisco, mm -hmm. a food, massive food industry. Yeah. So you have experience about how food production is over there, and then you're seeing what's over here. What are the differences you see? I think I think here a lot of the stuff is just natural. You know, like a lot of the fruits, especially like the fruits here, uh, they all have seeds in them, right? And uh, they're not a lot of engineered, you know, GMOs. I could tell that. Um, even the chickens that you buy at the store, they're smaller than the chickens you get back in the United States, you know. <clears throat> so here, I think everything's just a lot more natural. Uh -huh. Even the soda, you know, you get, you get a little soda. They sell these little tiny sodas, and it's no high, fruct uh, high fructose corn syrup. They use, like, regular sugar. Let's see if any high so fructose. <clears throat> Let's see. No, 
It's azúcar. Yeah, they don't use the high fructose corn syrup, it's just normal sugar. And look at the size of this. Okay, so the portion the portion control here in Colombia as well. Yeah, so you know what? Um, like in the United States, we're just so used to going through a drive through and you'll even order a small drink, but a small drink here is like a large drink here. So a small drink in this in the States is like a large here. Yeah, like, like a large extra here. large. Oh, region. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't even I didn't give up soda. I didn't give up, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that we say it's bad for us. And I still lost weight. And uh, even like the the one thing here, there's no fast foods. Not like we're used to. There, right. There's no drive. I haven't seen one drive through. I'm sure there is a drive through. In the pueblo, he's out of he's out of Barbosa, the pueblo, and yeah, there's no McDonald's in Barbosa. <clears throat> no, even Bejo, nothing. Nothing. No drive throughs Like the, the the fast food, like McDonald's, Burger King, that'll be like in the more expensive areas mm -hmm. in the city, mm -hmm. and not many people go there. Yeah. Or they go as a kind of like a treat because it's more expensive. It's mm -hmm. more expensive to eat a McDonald's half like full meal, combo mm -hmm. meal, mm -hmm. than to go to a restaurant and get a, a, a menu of the day. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you had a menu of the day? Oh here yeah, in Colombia? yeah. <clears throat> all the food here, it, it's like amazing. It's it's like um, like you know your grandma made it for you. Exactly. You know, like you go to a restaurant, it's like the food your grandma makes, and and it's not a. You know what? It, it it seems like a lot of food, but it really isn't because it kind of spread it out on the plate, and uh, it, it's really good. You, you feel real fulfilled, and you know it's not like uh, you don't feel sick afterwards, like, like United States. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a big <coughs> amount of food, but you don't feel like the sickness. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So, yeah. was there any part of your stay here when you got here where you had any doubts? Like, cause you, again, this is your first time coming to Colombia. You've never been here, and you're coming to live. Mm -hmm. Like you you came before you came. You're deciding I'm going to live here, right? Yeah. Okay, so have you had any doubts? No, the worst part about my whole experience to Colombia is, is the is the airplane. That was the worst part. Getting here. Getting here. Like what, getting into the valley. Yeah, because well, you had a mask. You have I had a mask ah, on for okay. twenty hours. So I, I flew from California to Florida. There was a layover, and then from Florida straight to Medellin, which I recommend if you're coming to Medellin, <clears throat> you come straight here. Don't fly to Bogota. Don't fly to. Um, I think like United Airlines, American Airlines, or those, they have a lot of direct flights to Medellin. Okay. If you're gonna go through like Avianca or uh, some of those other ones, you're, you're gonna be hopping around El Salvador and it, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, um, try to get a direct flight to wherever you're going. You might have to pay extra, but it's gonna be totally worth it. So <laughs> your, your biggest regret, your biggest doubt was just the flying. Oh yeah, I hate flying. And then we had a mask on for 20 hours because okay. you're as soon as you get in the airport, uh -huh. you have to have it on. You're on a plane, you got it on. Uh -huh. You're at the other airport, you have to have your mask on, uh -huh. right? You're uh -huh. on the other airplane, you have it on. You you arrive here, it takes like an hour or longer just to get out of the airport in uh, Medellin. So <laughs> let me ask you, um, what's some some culture differences you've seen here in Colombia? Um. Yeah, there's a lot of culture differences. Like culture shock for you. Like yeah, something that shocked you. Um, you you know what you got to do is you just got to be uh, don't take things personal if people say or do things they're not doing it on purpose. You got to remember that you're not from here and this is not the United States and they don't have to conform to what you've been used to the past 20, 30, 40 years or whatever you know that you've been used to. You 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 need to conform. So give me an example <laughs> of something like that if you can think of. Um, Make don't be so direct with people. It's kind of rude. Like if you know you uh -huh. go to the store, hey, I need this. You know, say hey, uh, how you doing? Or just learn, you know, basic hola, como estas? Uh, you know, just okay. just don't be so direct with people. I, I've learned that. And you know, Americans were like, you know, time is money. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't fly here. Yeah. Right? And 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 you know what? You got to be patient because. Uh, we moved here what a month and a half ago, and our internet was supposed to be installed like three weeks ago. Uh -huh. And they were saying it was going to be this past week. They're saying, "Oh, this coming week." Like, it, it, you know what? Um, <clears throat> even if I even offered money, like, "Hey, I'll pay you guys extra," and it, it does, yeah, to come out and install it, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's going to happen when it happens. You know. Interesting. <clears throat> so Interesting. don't don't um, you know don't demand that that things happen. They're just going to happen when they happen. And and what you said about the whole. Like talking to the person a little bit before asking for the thing, like, yeah, hola, como estas? How you, you know, how are you doing? How's your day? Yeah, greetings, greetings, <clears throat> and, and not going to trailer. Hey, I get me this or I need this. Yeah, that's a good point, especially in the grocery store. You'll notice that lines take longer because the person's chit chatting with the cashier, and mm -hmm. the cashier's chit chatting back mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Versus in the states, it's 
get him in, get him out, get him in, get him out. It's all about profit. Man. Yeah, yeah, big difference. That's, <clears> a, good, that's a very good point. Now, let me think. So out here, have you made friends with your neighbors? No, I don't. Uh, no, we don't know anybody, and I, I kind of like it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice. Okay, yeah. I made a comment though about when I was doing your tour of Pinka. Is this the most peaceful place ever, or, or what? Oh yeah, this is the most peaceful place I've ever been. Um, what about when neighbors come to throw parties? Oh, you know what? You can hear the fincas from. You're surrounded by fincas, and they could be like half a mile away, but they have the best sound system, so you're gonna hear whatever they're they're playing. So hilarious. <clears throat> that was one culture shock for me. Uh huh. We had a party here, like the first, our first night here, and, and a bunch of people came, and then they invited other people. I'm just, and then it was like at twelve o'clock at night. I'm asking my girlfriend, so when's the party gonna end? And she goes, it doesn't end like doesn't seven end. or eight or nine in the morning. And I'm like, are you serious? And she goes, yeah. no. And I was just like, oh my god, like that. That was that was like shocked. So I lasted. I'm a I'm a early bird. I go to bed early, right? Yeah. I lasted till 3 a.m. and I said, "Babe, I'm done." She goes, "All right, let's." We went to sleep. The party was still going on, so we're sleeping in the bedroom, and it's just like boom, 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 until seven until in the morning. Seven in the morning, and it, it was just that was a big shock for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? Don't don't judge them. Um, you know, it is what it is. Like, yeah. Some people like to party. <clears throat> you know, uh, my girlfriend told me that. You know, back in the day, Colombia went through a lot of bad stuff. So mm -hmm. people were like, they're just, they're happy. They're just very, Colombians are very happy people. They want everybody to be happy. They, If they're drinking, they want to make sure everybody else is drinking. They're very, they just want everybody to be relaxed and have fun. And and uh, they make the most out of everything. <clears throat> yeah, okay. so. Very cool, very cool. Now, how were you able to move? Are you, are you retired or? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm retired military, so I got a I got a pension, you uh -huh. know, and then I have a little uh, side business as well. But uh, I mean, you know what? It, it's it's really easy uh, to to come out here. Um, I think uh, you know having a job where you can work online or make yeah. some money that's good. You can find a job where you're making at least two grand a month and you know work online. And you you mentioned <clears throat> you told me this before when we talked a long time ago about retired military. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So you got your your pension from the military, mm -hmm. and you mentioned and I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about this, but this is what Juan told me that medical the medical insurance yeah. <clears throat> from the military applies yeah. here. Yeah, cover yeah. So if you're retired military, uh, your uh, Tricare, which is the military plan, it covers you in uh, in Colombia. Really? Yeah. So, that's, and you've already verified this and everything. Verified it. You can go on the website, at the TRICARE website, and you can look where, you know, you're covered out here. That's huge. So there's, there's probably a lot of, like, retired military guys living off a pension. Like, my buddy, I have a friend that lives off this, has disability coming in from the military, about $3,000 a month. And that, they're probably struggling back home in the States off that $3,000. Oh, yeah. But coming here to Colombia, mm -hmm. what do you think? $3, oh, 3000 is a lot because a doctor out here, somebody who's been in medical school and all that, like, they get paid, like, maybe $2,000 a month. So if you're making... Three thousand dollars a month, you you're good. You know what? You you're could, very you, good. If you're single, you could probably not even BSing. You could probably make make it on six to eight hundred bucks a month if you're frugal. This is true. If you live yeah. like a local, yeah, a local, I definitely definitely do it. Yeah. Now, how much you? And I forgot, I forgot to even ask this question in the beginning. How much you paying for rent on this uh, finca? You know, I, I was blown away. Uh, I didn't believe my girlfriend when she told me how much it was, and I, and I I thought she was messing with me, but we're paying six hundred dollars a month. And bucks. we didn't have to pay a security deposit. You didn't have to do that first, last month's rent. Uh -huh. None of that uh -huh. crap like the United States. Uh -huh. You hear that? Yeah, the storm's coming. <clears throat> oh, man. It's coming, so we might have to jump in the pool very soon. Yeah, um, we, we just paid the first month's rent, and uh -huh. then we moved in. That was it. Yeah. Can y'all imagine that? This yeah. whole finca for six, with a pool and everything, 600 bucks a month. Yeah. It's eight bedrooms total. And that comes with that, that worker, right? The worker that works here? Yeah, the worker, he takes, they maintain the pool for us, uh, they, the yard. Uh, we got horses on, on the property that uh -huh. we, we can use. We have uh -huh. three horses, no, four horses. Uh, there's a baby cow, he thinks he's a, he's a dog, the coolest, his name's Manchas. Uh -huh. And uh, a couple of dogs, they kind of guard the place. But you know, there's never had an issue out here never had a problem everybody you know uh, i don't know my neighbors but you know when we're out driving on the roads everybody's real nice and they wave uh-huh <clears throat> so do you plan to stay here long term in this finca um we don't know um we're we're gonna see where it goes but i we definitely gonna look at some property and building a house we could
You could build a house for like twenty five thousand dollars. Oh, you going to live around here? In uh, probably or? not. Probably closer to her family. Okay. Out there, and maybe in Bejo or uh, Copacabana. Mm hmm. That's Copacabana good area. is kind of like a mix of here and Bejo. It's yeah. kind of like a little bit city, but a little bit more spread out. It's a good area. And uh, you know, we're thinking about that area. Barbosa is, is definitely nice. The the little Pueblo Barbosa, all the people mm -hmm. are real nice. It's uh, it's real cool. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll be out for six months a year, and if we love it, you know, maybe we'll buy it. We're not sure. Yeah, because like right now you're getting used to, to the farm life, living mm -hmm. out in the country. Your girlfriend never lived in the country life like, like this, mm -hmm. so she's getting used to it too. So then maybe in the future, if you both like it, mm -hmm. you're gonna buy a piece of land and build a house, mm -hmm. and invite me over for barbecue. Yeah, all the time. Oh yeah. yeah, tacos and beer. <laughs> tacos and beer. Yeah. All right, man. I think uh, I think that's good enough questions. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Anything else to add on to the interview? Anything else that you, oh, think no, you guys man. might need you, to know? You know what? Uh, I would definitely watch uh, David's channels. You can. You can I started from the beginning, so watch all the videos and then, and uh, you know, take some notes, take some notes on some of the stuff, and uh, you know, David, you can always reach out to him. Um, I know, I know, uh, his time is very valuable, so I, I actually, uh, I off, I, um, I hired David, you know, for like a month, and uh, and it, you know, it was really reasonable, uh, and then uh, he, he was there for me, answer a lot of questions for me, but uh, you know what, man, you don't want to. You don't want to live till you're like, you hit your 80s and you're 80 years old and you're sitting where you're at and you're wondering like what what life could have been if you actually went out and ventured and, and saw the world and learned new cultures. Um, but I, I got to tell you, I feel like a million bucks out here. It's it's amazing. Uh, I just uh, I just never thought it would be this beautiful. And then the weather's great. The people are wonderful. You're gonna fall in love with not just Colombia but you, the whole thing, the people, the culture, the food. Um, the true. weather, everything, it's, it's amazing. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, reach out to David. If you think he's helped you out at all, you know, uh, you can uh, definitely help him out on Patreon. You can do like a monthly donation, you know, uh, you know, for the cost of a cup of coffee, you know, you can help him out and he can keep doing what he's doing because it's not easy for him to do what he's doing. He, he goes all over the, pretty much all over Columbia yeah. and he makes these amazing videos. And uh, you know what? Anything's possible, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of money to live out here and uh, yeah You can have a great time and it could change your life. It could save your life. I appreciate that well, I appreciate that and, and it's true like one I helped him out he, in the beginning He paid for a consultation and then he paid for ongoing uh, cons Consulting throughout like especially when he first started coming to before he came to Columbia when he first arrived He had questions so ongoing consultation So if you guys are interested in that or that kind of service, let me know send me a message on Instagram or, or comment below and I'll we can get in contact but yeah, Juan, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the invite here to this wonderful finca. We, my girl, Nati, has been dying to get out of the city. And when I said, hey, my friend Juan invited me to the finca, she said, when are we going? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we're going to enjoy our time. I'm going to jump in the pool and get, get some sun. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any questions for Juan or for me, comment below. And you guys stay safe. Stay positive with a positive attitude. Anything else to say? Last thing? No, no man. Uh, you guys stay safe. And uh, thanks for watching the channel. Yep. Ciao. Bye.